we're going to start with goal setting, but before we do that, Mom's already told you a little bit about me, but in my day job, I'm a project manager at Mass General in the nursing department, and I've been there for about 17 years. Um, I've been trained in process improvement, so my brain kind of tends to look for like, where are the problems and things, how can we make things faster and more efficient, so it's... It comes naturally to me, but I've also been trained in it, which comes in handy. And as Mom mentioned, I have a knitting podcast, and I also sell knitting and crochet patterns <laughs> online. So I don't, I don't do eBay like you guys, but I am at least a little bit familiar with online selling and things like that. So, and over the course of last year, I made a lot of progress in what I've been doing with my my podcast and my knitting. So just some examples of um, my listeners and Instagram following and things like that. I'm pretty proud of all of what I've, what I've done with that, and I'd be happy to talk about that offline with you guys, too. But I'm not one of those boring people that sits home and makes lists and has no fun. <laughs> so other things about me, you know, I have a lot of great relationships. I love to get outside. I hike and kayak, and I do lots of other different things. So you can make goals and accomplish things and have a lot of fun at the same time. So that's what just what I wanted to start with for you guys. So what are we going to talk about tonight? We're going to talk about goal setting and why it's important to set goals and to give you some ideas um, on how to do that and how to set some parameters so you make sure that you're successful. And then we're going to talk a little bit about organization. That's a pretty big topic, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I organize things and how it makes it easier for me to keep track of all of the different things that I have going on in my life. And um, a little bonus tip on kind of documenting some workflows to make it easy for you when you go back to things that you have to do over and over. All right, so why bother setting goals, right? Like you could just kind of go about your year, although this time of year everyone talks about New Year's resolutions and goal settings and 20 for 20 lists and things like that. So it's, it's, it's easy to get caught up in that excitement, but goals can kind of give you direction for the year and can help you figure out what things you want to say yes to, and then can also help you say no to things that you've decided already you're not prioritizing. So if you're putting all your eggs into selling on eBay, you might decide that there's two or three other things that you thought were fun, but maybe that's not the priority right now. And it can make it easier, especially if you're a people pleaser, to say, you know what, I've committed to this thing, I'm going to need to say no to you. Um, and to experience that success and fulfillment, it's really gratifying to set your mind on something and to be able to say that you achieved it. So, um, so some basics. The first thing I will tell you, and um, after the slide we'll have you start writing things down if you'd like to start thinking about your own goals, but the first thing I would tell you is keep it small. People tend to think that they should make some giant grand plan of I want to quadruple my sales this year. I want to lose a hundred pounds or something very dramatic. And if that motivates you and that feels awesome, then go for it. And some of the rest of the stuff that I'm going to talk about will help you figure out how to get there. But I recommend kind of setting one big goal for the year. And then that doesn't mean you can only focus on that though. Um, it's just kind of that priority project that you're going to work on and then if you meet that goal sooner, or there's not a lot of a lot of other little goals within it, then you can move on to the next thing, and you can kind of repeat the process that I'm going to go through with you as many times as you want, as often as you want. The other thing I would say is start where you are, be realistic. It's tempting to say it's a new year, I'm going to do this big crazy thing that I've never done before, and it's going to be great. I have no idea how I'm going to get there, and I've never done any of this before, but. If you think about it, you if you've never run in your life, you wouldn't say, I'm going to run a marathon next month. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. So try to think about something that's exciting to you, but that's also realistic. And if you don't want to start tomorrow, it may not be the right idea. And maybe it is. Sometimes it's a hard thing and you have to kind of gear up a little bit. But you should at least be interested enough to say, you know what, I'm thinking about this thing, and tomorrow I could do one thing to get me closer to that. The other big thing is to know your why. I like to tell people to make a, a list of compelling reasons why you want to do the thing you want to do. Because if you start writing them down, you might realize you're not actually all that interested. If you are choosing a goal because someone else thinks you should do it, or you heard that it would be great to run a marathon, if you find that you're not really willing to do it, you're not gonna put in the effort to get there, and you're probably just gonna end up stopping, and then that doesn't feel great. So um, 
on your worksheet, the, the first section is to think about one goal that you'd like to achieve, or if you want to do like one personal goal and one business goal, you could definitely do that. Um, and then there's a spot there to write down some of your reasons why. And again, don't feel like you need to do all of this now, but it's hopefully this is a worksheet that will work well for you guys and we'll share it um, afterwards in the, in the group. Um, but it's just a place to kind of have those placeholders for things you might want to think about. So, ideas for goals. Um, I like to think about goals in terms of things that are concrete that you will know for sure if you accomplished. If you tend to think like, I just want to be healthier this year, or I should sell more. How do you know at the end of the year that you got there, if, if it's that vague? So I like to focus on things that you can really be able to tell if you've done it. So things like making more sales than you did last year and you could you know, put a percentage or something on that, losing X number of pounds, dropping X number of pan sizes, um, saving money towards retirement, things like that. You could look back at the end of the year and say, yep, I did it, or no, I didn't. Or in six months, you could say, I'm really off track and you'd be able to know the difference. Um, the other thing that I would ask you to keep in mind that's not specifically on here is it should be something that's within your control. Um, I'll use an example from mom if you don't mind. One of the things she was saying was she would like to get some number of more members for the group. And I said, that's a great goal. The tricky part with goals like that is you can't absolutely control that. I would suggest a better goal might be you're gonna send more emails or talk to more people or post some ads on Facebook or do the things that you can do, the things that you can control, and probably great things are gonna come from that. You might get four people or you might get 50 people. You can't ultimately de like decide if people sign up or not, but you can control all the hard work that you know probably goes in into that thing. And again, it's up to you. If, if having that number of I want 25 more people is really motivating and it feels great, then do it. You know what I mean? It's all up to whatever feels good for you. All right, so preparing. So this is where some of my project management skills come into play because if you're thinking about wanting to increase your sales or list more items or things like that, your goal is a project. You can't do the thing. If someone says, I'm gonna plan a wedding, that's not like a check it off the list, the wedding's done, right? There is a lot of little things that need to go into that thing before you can say, I've achieved my goal. And breaking it down into those small achievable next steps is the most important thing I would say that hopefully you guys will take away from this. So um, another thing that I ask you to do on your worksheet is to think about what actions you could do, like actually do, to get you closer to meeting that goal. And I would say start with a wild brainstorm, like there's no bad ideas here. It might seem crazy or you might never actually do it, but there's no bad ideas and it might help you just think of different different approaches that you hadn't really let yourself think about before. Where I will caution you though, is that some of us anyways, like to research a lot before we decide what's the next step. You know, I'm gonna research for another hour and then three weeks later, we haven't done anything. So I like to call that passive action versus massive action. You can research a little bit, that's good, but ultimately start doing some stuff and you will learn what's working and what's not and we're gonna talk about adjusting and seeing and going from there. Does that make sense? Um, and then again, kind of make it measurable. How, you, how will you know if you've done the work? We talked about that a little bit in terms of how you define your goal, but um, thinking about what those actions will be and how you'll be sure that you're moving towards, towards actually achieving your goal. Um, um, so, some ideas you can think about is you know, depending on what your goal is, these are some things that you can actually measure. You could write down every week or every month or whatever it is to say, I know I'm working towards my goal because I've sold X number of books or I've sold X number of products or I've earned a certain amount of money. Yeah, so if, yeah, if your goal is to, uh, you know, have a bigger audience, have a better presence, you'd want to sign people up on email and get more followers on social media and, you know, there's different ways to know if you're working towards that goal. So these are just some ideas and sometimes just tracking those things is a good way um, to see where you are throughout the year. All right, so now that you've listed your goal and the steps that you need to take in order to make action for it, the next thing I would say is 
try to think of ways to make it easy. Again, if you're the type that maybe likes to research things to death, you might also be thinking, well, if I was a professional, I would have to build a spreadsheet and I would have to make this whole thing. Don't make it a production. If you're gonna make it hard, you're not gonna wanna do it. There's probably some super easy thing that you could do to just get a little traction and try the next thing. Um, one thing to think about is like, what would you tell your friend to do if, if, if the next step was for them to do? Um, don't plan to rely on willpower. If your list of action steps looks terrifying and hard and like, I could grit my teeth and do it for two weeks, but you know, we're not gonna do this forever. That may not be a good idea. So try to start with some easier things. And I would say too, again, don't wait for motivation. Ideally, you're picking some goal that you're interested in, in achieving and you think that it will better your life in some way, but motivation is earned. If your goal is to list 20 items a week and you do that the first week, you're gonna feel pretty good. You do that again the second, third, and fourth week, you're gonna feel great. And you will build that momentum, but you can't necessarily wait to feel motivated to start. Otherwise, you might be waiting longer than you're expecting. Um, or never do it at all, yeah. Um, and then I would say that the best option when you're thinking about the new habits that you think you need to do to get you to your goal is to figure out ways to work them into the habits of your everyday life. We all have habits that we don't even think about, and that's the beauty of habits. When you wake up in the morning, you probably brush your teeth before you leave the house, right? You guys all smell pretty good. <laughs> so you didn't have to say, oh, I better get out my willpower and make sure that I brush those teeth. You just <laughs> did it, right? And probably you made a cup of coffee on your way out or something too, right? Like we do things and you don't think like, oh, I better set up the coffee maker or whatever your thing is. We have hundreds of habits that you've probably never even taken any time to think about, but you just do them. And that's the cool thing about habits and we'll talk a little bit about how to kind of pair things, but if you can build in some of those new things you wanna work on with existing habits, you can start to just incorporate those into your life and they'll feel as easy as putting on the seatbelt when you get in the car. All right, so um, one of my favorite authors on the topic of um, productivity and happiness is Gretchen Rubin. And my favorite book of hers is um, Better Than Before. And in this book, she talks all about how to make things into habits in your everyday life. And so I pulled out the, there, she has tons of strategies in her book for how to do this, but I pulled out the ones that I think are most applicable for most people. And these are some of them. So scheduling, put it on your calendar. If you're saying that this goal is important to you, it, it deserves some time on your calendar, right? If you're gonna list X number of things, if that's your goal, then you need to make time to do that. If you look back at last year and you looked at your calendar, you can probably see what your priorities are. They may not be your priorities for this year. You might realize that you wasted too much time or you focused on something and you're deciding that's not a great idea anymore. That's fine. But if you um, schedule it and you're looking at your calendar, then you will see it. Um, monitoring, so tracking how many times you do things every day, week, month, whatever the interval is getting back to like how will you know if you're working on towards your goal. Um, keeping track of that, even just a little scratch pad in a notebook is a great way to just kind of see that success. Um, accountability is a great option for a lot of people, especially if you have someone with a similar goal. You say, you know what, you have, maybe you have the same goal, maybe you don't, but if we're both working on stuff and I say at the end of the week I want to have done X and you say I want to have done Y, and we're gonna plan to meet up with it, meet up and talk about it. A lot more people are inclined to get it done because they don't wanna call their friend and say, yeah, I didn't do my thing, did you do yours? <laughs> so that accountability buddies can be a great way to get the stuff done. Um, convenience and inconvenience. So if you wanna make a good habit stick, the idea is to make it easy, and if you want a bad habit to go away, make it really inconvenient. So you know, if you're trying to lose weight and you keep getting into your husband's chips, hiding them in the back of the cabinet where you're less likely to see them. It just, it's just one more, every barrier you can make to you know, avoiding that bad habit is great. And similarly with um, things that you wanna make stick. Make, again, just make it super easy. Um, pairing is one of my favorite ones. If there's something that you already consistently do, pair that new thing with it. And this can work in a couple different ways. One example I like to give is if you want to be a runner or you want to work out on the elliptical twice a week or whatever it is, 
save something that you love, a podcast, a TV show, something like that, and you are not allowed to watch it unless you are on that elliptical. And then you'll look for, you want to watch the show, I'm not going to we- miss this week's episode, but if I committed to doing it with the exercise, then that's one way to get it done. And you know, you could do that with meeting a friend for coffee. If I, I can meet with my friend for coffee, but I gotta get there a half an hour early and do my spreadsheet, whatever your thing is. But you can pair things with stuff you like and or with stuff that you already do. And then for some people, identity really works. You know, If you wanna be a healthy person, you want to be that person, and that's important to you, then you might be less likely to order french fries when you go out to the restaurant with your friends or something like that. It it helps kind of each of your decisions. If you want to be known as a great eBay seller, then you got to do the work. And if um, you know that you're not making your actions, you realize that you might be telling people that you're something, maybe not. Trish said that you ordered a healthier dinner because I was here. I did. I don't know what she's talking about. She orders healthy dinners everywhere we go. (laughs) (laughs) For the record, I think I ate more pizza than she did. Um, All right, let's keep going. Um, So the middle section of your worksheet is about um, ideas about how you can incorporate those habits into your everyday life. Um, And... Again, just something to, to start thinking about. I, I think it's a fun exercise if you have time to think about all the habits that you do have. Um, little things that, you know, some people have trouble taking their pills, but they make coffee every morning. So they put their bottle of pills right next to the coffee maker. You don't forget it anymore. But little things like that um, can really help you get things done. So just I encourage you to think about those. And we can talk about, if you need ideas for this stuff afterwards, um, we can we can do um, questions while I'm up here. I can come around and talk to you. We doing okay on time? Yeah, you're fine. Okay. 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 I have to be up for work in the morning, so we won't be here that late. I'm an early riser. Okay. Um, so the other thing that's really important um, is making your goal and ideally the next actions associated visible to you. You hear a lot of people by like March or April, they're like, I think I said a New Year's resolution, but I have no idea what it was. If you're writing your goal down every day or putting it somewhere where you can see it, it's not gonna happen. And it might seem silly and there's lots of different ways to do it and you might need to figure out different ways of what works for you, but you could put post-it notes around your house or at your desk or wherever, in your car, um, if you know you have to run errands every day after work to get your stuff done, put that note in your car so you don't forget. Um, Again, texting with people or emailing with people or checking in with your accountability kind of makes it um, more visible to you in that you know that you have a plan to check in with someone. It might be a little bit more on your radar. Um, You could track it in an app. Um, I use Evernote, we'll talk about that a little more. Um, later, but that's where I keep all of my reference materials and it's where I track all of what I plan to do for the week and then what I actually do. I also, um, I write down my goals for the year every single day in a notebook that I use to track my food and my wellness plans for the day. And it, it sounds really silly, but it helps. I did it last year and I exceeded my goals and it just, and there's something about physically writing it, there's all sorts of research out there, that physically writing it just cements it into your brain in a different way, and you just start thinking like, I am doing this thing, like, and then you, it will also kind of trigger some of those next steps. Yeah, absolutely, much more tangible. Um, all right, so, we've made our goal, we've set some actions, we've thought about how to make it more visual. The other thing is, it kind of goes along with being visual, but you gotta check in on a, on a regular basis to see how you're going. The important part with this is not to judge yourself, because we're never gonna be perfect, right? Like, you might set X amount of things you have to do every week, and stuff comes up. My schedule for this week just changed on my way here. The whole rest of my week is not gonna be what I thought it was gonna be. That's okay, that needs to be okay, that's, that's life. Um, but you can still keep track of the things that you actually did get done and celebrate those. I like to call them my wins. I write down my wins every single day and I track them for the week. Cause sometimes when you're having a bad week, it's great to look back and go, 
you know what? I did those four awesome things. Like I might not have done everything, but those four things were pretty great and every little step helps, you know? Um, but don't be too hard on yourself if you're not getting things done. And then just ask, what do you need to do to move closer? Get those tasks on your to-do list. Put that time on the calendar and just figure out where you need to go. Um, don't let perfection be the enemy of good. Um, one example um, that I like to give, John Acuff is another author that I like. He wrote a book named Finish. There's gonna be links to all of the books that I'm talking about at the end. Um, but he talks about, you know, if you had a plan to do something every day, for 31 days, say it's a little something on eBay. And day 14, you couldn't do it. You got sick, you had to take your dog to the vet, whatever happened, happened, or you just didn't want to do it. <coughs> what he talks about is, um, what's more important is the day after perfect. So you already blew it, right? I blew it, I didn't do all 31 days. Most people at that point just stopped. But if you did it again on the 15th and you kept going, you could still have 30 items listed at the end of the month instead of 14. And that can make a huge difference. And so don't let that perfection be the enemy of the good. Um, that's what I would recommend. The other, the other analogy that I love for this one is that, you know, if you were driving here tonight and your tire blew, and you got out and you were like, oh God, this is the worst night ever. My car is wrecked. And you just went around and slashed the other three tires. <laughs> no one would ever do that, right? You wouldn't. But like that's essentially what you're doing. You're like, well, I had one bad day, so that's it for the rest of the month, right? Like, it's a funny analogy, but like, right? You would never do that. Like, it's just because it's a little bit broken doesn't mean that's the end of it. Um, All right. You go there. Okay, so just to kind of review um, what I would recommend in terms of goal setting is set a goal, set some time parameters on it. It doesn't have to be a year. I like to set basically one personal goal, one work goal a year, and then I break that down into monthly goals. But again, do whatever works for you. Write out those compelling reasons. You are gonna have tough days in bad weeks and a terrible month every once in a while, but having different compelling reasons for why you want to do something might be the thing that kind of gets you back on track. Um, write down the actions, the actual next physical thing that you can do to move towards that goal. List out different ways you can measure your progress to see if you're on track. Um, make the goal and those action steps visible in your everyday life. And then set, a, set time to assess and identify what needs to be done next. And then you're just repeating those, those steps until you're achieving your goal. So what I thought I would do is give you some examples. So as I mentioned, I sell knitting patterns online. I had an amazing year last year. My goal was to um, publish 10 patterns, published 11. So that went really well. And I have my best sales year ever. Um, but I want to do better this year. And my goal is only to publish seven patterns this year. So if I want to do 10% more sales, I need to keep selling those existing patterns that I already have, because while I have 21 patterns for sale, not everyone's bought them, right? There's millions of knitters, maybe Robin wants to buy my pattern. Yeah, well, so when you sell your patterns under what name, Boston Jen? Boston Jen. Just check it. Yeah. So um, I thought I would give just some concrete examples of the kinds of things that I talked about. So why do I want to make the sales? I'll be honest with you, I make pretty good money and I don't have a ton of expenses. Do I need an extra X amount of dollars? Not necessarily. So every once in a while, I'm like, you know what? I could just watch Netflix for a little while and knit my own thing. But I would like to be a successful designer that is building a business that I can potentially use when I hopefully retire early, right? So sometimes it's hard to see that bigger picture, but it helps. And I have other reasons why I want to do it. It is fun. I love when I put up a pattern and people want to buy it. But that's not always enough to say, I need to redo the map on this one again because I don't like that. That one I didn't design. <laughs> this is one of mine. It's fine. <laughs> joke is what I'm really Well, doing. when we go to knitting festivals, people walk around and go, ooh, what are you wearing? Because everyone knows all the patterns. And mom never knows the answer. And that one is the one you get right the least often. It's called hoo hoo Yeah. She never gets that. I'm like, why are you swearing it? <laughs> um, all right, so if I want to get 10% more sales, what are some actions that I can take next year to try to get there? 
So I can advertise all those existing patterns. They already exist, they're ready for sale. I have a pretty big Instagram audience, but I need to remind people that I'm selling these things. They're not necessarily going to just remember on their own. I can put out new patterns. I can collaborate with other designers to try to increase my audience. If, if I expose myself to someone new, they might look at my back catalog. I can build my email list and send emails regularly. I'm not great at this one, but my goal is to send two emails a month as part of um, when I publish a podcast and then include a pattern highlight. Hey, by the way, I have this pretty pattern. People will probably buy it. Usually when I put a link in an email, people click on it. So those are just some different ideas of actions that I can take to get towards this goal. Um, habit strategies that I can employ to try to get these things into my regular thing. So scheduling, that's a good one. Um, I could, my goal is to do at least three promotional posts on Instagram using a program that I use called Tailwind, which does scheduling for social media. And um, I can schedule those in advance so I don't have to be thinking of them on the fly. There's a web client that you can use as well. We can talk more about that at the end too. <coughs> Remind me. Um, I can schedule time on my calendar to draft an email template. I think if I make a template for that, I can just plug and play and use that all year. I can schedule time every week to work on new designs. Sometimes this is hard, especially when things are busy. But if I put time on there and don't commit to other things, then I'm more likely to have that time to work on it. Um, monitoring, we'll talk a little bit more at the end about how I um, track things in Evernote. Um, I can review my monthly sales, right? I'll know how well I'm doing each month if I'm looking at my numbers. Um, and pairing, so on Sunday nights I do a weekly review, um, mostly of personal stuff, but I could, while I'm sitting at my computer, I could do those tailwind posts on Sunday night. And how can I make things more visible? So I already told you, I write down my goals every morning. Um, that takes like six seconds, like it's not, it's not a big effort, but that helps. Um, I list out my action items in the file that I keep of my, basically my to-do list for the week. I check things off as I get to them and then add new tasks as I think of them. Kind of having them all in one place makes it easier to say, oh, I did this thing, the next logical step is this, and then I can write that down. Um, and I talk about, um, not in detail, but I talk about my goals on a segment on my podcast. So it kind of keeps it top of mind. If I'm gonna to talk to people and I'm like, well, I haven't done anything. It, sometimes it happens, but that kind of helps make it more visible and keeps me re remembering to do it. And then how do I check in on my goals? As I mentioned, I do it during my weekly review on Sunday nights. So we'll, we'll talk about that again kind of in the next section. All right, so that was a lot, I feel like, already. But <laughs> the next two parts are a lot shorter. So. Um, goals are great and habits are amazing, but sometimes <laughs> life just feels real overwhelming, doesn't it? Like there's a lot of things, there's a lot of lists and a lot of places and emails coming in. And so kind of having some basic structure I think can help. It's made a huge difference for me when someone messages me and says, you know, where was that place we went or something like that, I can usually pull it up like right away. And it's because I have a good system. So I'm just gonna tell you, yeah, and it, it's not that hard once you kind of build that system. So where I got a lot of um, this from is um, David Allen's book, Getting Things Done. I also went to one of their, the seminars that they offer, and it's amazing. And these are just some quotes, I'm not gonna read them to you from David Allen, but his basic approach is to get things out of your mind. Your mind is for having ideas, not for storing them. And people like to pride themselves on how much they can remember, and that's great if you have a wonderful memory, but literally your brain is not built for that. It's for having ideas. And if you can get things out of your head into a system that you actually trust, like I can let go of things because I know I can find it, then your brain will be freed up to do really creative and fun and exciting things that you may not have the bandwidth for if you're trying to kind of keep track of everything just in your head. So um, the basics of the getting things done approach, and I, I highly recommend if there's like one book, I just, it's, it's kind of a boring book, I'm not gonna lie, but it's, I don't know, it's been really, really useful. I've read it at least a few times, but this is the basic approach that David Allen um, teaches 
which is to capture, clarify, organize, reflect, and engage. So the first thing he tells you to do is capture. And you can decide like how much you want to bite off. You could literally think of everything in your life. Every family member, every project you're working on, we gotta clean out the garage, I gotta plan that birthday party, like anything that comes to your head, write it down. He also prescribes, if there's something you can just do in two minutes or less, just do it. Don't spend the time putting it on the list and figuring out how to organize it, like just get it done. So that's just kind of a little bonus tip. But then once you've kind of gotten all those thoughts out of your head, clarify it. A lot of times we'll put something on the to-do list, like plan the birthday party. You can't just plan a birthday party. It's kind of like the wedding example I used before. You probably have to look at the calendar, talk to your husband, find the caterer, book the cake, all of those things. Though That's the clarifying step. So it's kind of like what we talked about with finding your next actions. What do you need to do to get it done? So. Um, and then sometimes it's just I need to file it or I gotta forward the email and then you're done but figuring out kind of what you need to do with it um, organizing it we're going to talk about in a minute because the way that David Allen talks about um, organizing is a little different than your kind of traditional to-do list reflect is kind of what we talked about again with goals is your brain's only gonna trust that you're writing things down and saving them in this special place if you actually go back and look at things periodically and make sure that you're doing what you need to do. Um, and then engagement. I mean, you just have to, you have to work with it and actually look at it and then actually start doing the things or it's not, not really going to help. Okay. So what he talks about is organizing by context. And the idea behind this is if you have a to-do list of 75 things, again, it just might be too overwhelming. You might do nothing. But also, if you're looking at the first ones, and it's clean the garage, and take down the Christmas tree, and call so-and-so, but you're at work, you can't do any of those things, so it's useless to keep looking at the list of all the things you can't do yet. But if you're, you know, at your computer, you might be able to, you know, get a few of those related things done. Um, errands is one that I love. I have a whole errands list. so. I have my Trader Joe's list and my Walmart list and my Target list and then within that list I have key things that I buy there. I can just copy and paste and kind of keep reusing them. Um, this can be done any way that you want in terms of if you, um, if you want to keep notebooks, if you like bullet journaling, whatever system you want to use is fine. I do it electronically um, in an app called Evernote because I have that on my phone on my home computer and on my work computer. So it's a very, I can always capture because I always have my phone with me. And so it's, it's an easy way for me to just say, mom asked me to send her this thing, I write it down. And again, because I'm reviewing it on a regular basis, I know I'm not going to forget to do it. So this is a, it's a, it's a big organizing system and I'm not gonna have time to go into all of it, but oh yeah, it's free. I mean, if you read the book, you'll get all of it. There's a Getting Things Done podcast. There's a million resources out there, but the bottom line is you don't have to do it in the way that he recommends, but the big idea here is just to get everything out of your brain into a place where you can trust that you can find it again and then keep reviewing that and checking things off and doing the work that goes with it. So, what's worked for me? So, I keep all of my notes in Evernote. I have, I do things a little bit differently than sort of the traditional getting things done system because I've tweaked and I've evaluated and figured out what works for me. Um, so every week I have a note where I track my next action. So this 2020 projects, one of them right now says week five. And I'll show you a little bit more about that in a second. But that's where I keep all of the things that I need to do instead of, you know, putting them under errands and home and computer personal and things like that. I've kind of moved away from doing that just because that works for me. And it's one place to kind of go and look for those things. But for longer term projects, I do put them under here and then I do go through those each week. It doesn't take as much time as it probably sounds like it does. Um, I don't put my calendar items in here. Those go directly into my Google Calendar so that I can have all of that on my phone. But so right now I'm working on some more knitting designs. I keep a list and there's 17 different ideas that are in there that they're probably not all actually active. Um, some the next ideas that I want to work on but I haven't put time into yet. I know those are waiting for me. If I have a really good idea and I draw a little sketch or I write some notes, I know where I can find that. I'm not worried in six months 
oh, I had that idea for that hat and it's gone because I know where to find it. Um, ideas and stitches, again, that's just kind of like a little reference library for me, but I know I can put them there and they'll always be there. I do use um, the agendas and the errands one a lot. So, and then some of these other ones are just fun, but they're great, like someday maybe. Someone tells me about some awesome place to go on vacation. I don't know if I'll do it, but someday, maybe, right? Like at least I have it. Um, and then the great thing about Evernote too is you can search. So if I wrote like, Gail told me that I should go to blah, 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 I could write Gail vacation and probably it, it will come up. Um, is it better than an Apple note? <laughs> Just the note, the notes app. Yeah, on an iPhone. Yeah, I like the way that this lets you kind of categorize things. You can do as little or as much of that as you want. And there's also things called tags. So, like under, I also keep all a bunch of stuff under reference. So I have like a work reference and a personal reference and stuff like that. And then I use tags like health or medical or vacation or things like that. So if someone said, where did you, what did you like to go when you went to Portland, Maine last year? I can go click on that tag and find it. <coughs> so, yeah, I like the organizing system that it offers, um, but it, it really doesn't so matter. Kind of like, a, um, like a hyperlink? Yeah, and you can actually hyperlink within the app. So on my weekly review, it says, update this document, I can link it and then it opens that document and then I update that there and I can check it off on the first page. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's a really cool program. And if you use it on, I think, two devices, it's free. If you want to use it on more devices than that, then you need to pay for it. But I think it's totally worth it. I pay it. But. A thing on Google called Google Keep, it does a lot of those same functions. Yeah, I've heard free. good things about that too. And yeah. It, and it's free on multiple devices. Yeah, and there's tons of free options. There's no right way to do it. With all of this stuff, it's what works for you. If setting up a comp, this might look complicated to some people, it works for me. Um, some people, love and need to write things down. If that's you, don't get a program. You know what I mean? Really try to figure out, and you might not figure it out on the first shot, but figure out what works for you. Um, I've never kept a calendar. No? Never. Yeah? Well, maybe that's the thing you want to do in 2020. How do you make it to your appointment? I just remember everything. <laughs> <laughs> he's just smarter than us. Yeah, he's just. Have a better memory. He's just smarter than all of us. That's all. Uh, I just remember. Well, this week it kind of screwed me. Screwed me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I missed a very important um, reunion. Oh. Uh, yeah, Thanksgiving. Oh. That I'd gone to the year before that was going to happen again. So. Ah, it's time that I get It's time. Yeah. This is your year. You're going to get organized. So we'll put that on your list. We'll put it on. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't understand. I don't think that works, though. You have to. I have Outlook, but I don't, I'm not going to. I don't want to interrupt you. Oh, yeah. I, I know it gives yeah. Outlook. Yeah. You know, that. Like, like when you sent the, the link to come here tonight, it, it asked you if you wanted to put it on your calendar. So, yeah, I wonder, I think we need to do something different for that as well. Meetup does that. It, yeah. Meetup Meet does puts it on automatically. Yeah. It gives you a notice as yeah. you want to add it. Mine got added automatically to my yeah, Google calendar. Yeah. Um, as soon as I vote going, yeah. it shows automatically. Yeah, yeah. right. Meetup calendar. populates it immediately. Yeah. Yeah. On the Google one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it might work differently with different right. platforms. It actually gives you the option to, check and make sure it's to do Google or Outlook calendar, whichever calendar is running. Um, so I just thought I would list out, this is how I do it. Like I said, I have one file for the week. So my week five, well, this was obviously some of my stuff for week four was to finalize these slides. Um, I had some stuff to mail out for prizes for my podcast winners. I have to find a receipt for my flex spending. So different things like that kind of go on the list. And I don't write down every single tiny little detail. And again, if I can do it in less than two minutes, I'm doing it. I'm not putting it on the list. And then there's some things that I want to be there every week. So mom was talking earlier about um, communication and like keeping up with people. I'm not great about that either. So I literally have a list of people, I didn't write them here, that I wanna make sure that I'm texting or contacting in some way every week. It's a little thing, but it's easy to let three weeks go by without talking to your best friend. I don't so, see that person. Diane never calls
calls me. Okay, just want you guys to know this. Never calls me. No, no, no. She's terrible. I text her, I get a one word answer back. But then I see her, and we're like best buds, and we go and drink. All right, so so this. No, no, I'm not insulted. I know it's her. This week she called me twice. The second time I said, "What's wrong?" Because I thought, "Oh, someone died." Like you know, like it is bad. She is so awful. So. Can we just start with me? I'll be happy if we start with me. We can make it on that list. That's all. Get used to it. When she's like, "What's wrong?" What's going on? Is someone in the hospital? No. I don't want you to think it's only you. I text her and said, "Oh, call me." Right. Exactly. I did. I did. I was busy though. I want to make sure. Do you know how many? Calendar can come in handy though because if you know he usually sends out the invite in May, maybe you just call him in May and say, "Hey, dude, do you have an invite?" Yeah, exactly. I want to come. I want to come. Right? Yeah. You know you're invited. He just didn't know to tell you. Well, that's one of my goals that we would get when I got this from Diane. The what was was the homework Mm -hmm. on on the email you sent. I did read it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think one of my goals was social media. Yeah, but we can help. We can help. I don't know how with these goals too throughout the year. Like I think we, we if we're gonna do this goal setting, we'll make places that we can check in, like Jen says, because we can be each other's buddies to get these things done. Helps with accountability. So, right. Yes. Yeah, and it, I mean, for some people, it will work well to just post in the group and say, I did these things this week. Some people need to know, like, Diane is going to text me. <laughs> right. And that's, like, unless you know it's one specific person. So you'll, you need to figure out, like, what works for you. But accountability works really well for a lot of people. Um, so I, I copy and paste this part of the list every week because it's stuff that I want to do every week. Some of these things are things I've been doing for a long time, so it's it's not all like new stuff that I'm trying to do, but it's stuff that I want to know every week. If I did that, I'll think of, I've had a good week. Um, let's go to the next one. And then at the end of the week, I've told you a couple times now, I do a weekly review. So I don't want to have to remember what things I want to look at at the end of every week. So I have a list. So I update my calendar and I catch up on journaling and I um, add details to about my knitting projects to the website where I store all, all of that information. So then it's not a month later and I have a whole huge, you know, huge to-do list to do of all those kinds of things but it probably takes me 15-20 minutes to kind of run through my list of all those things and then I start looking ahead at the next week so I want to take some classes and stuff this year so I've linked some websites that I want to just click on and see have they updated their calendar maybe there's something that I want to go to um, I review my calendar for the next week, so I look at every day and I talk about it with my boyfriend and say, this is what I think's on for this week, is there anything you haven't told me about, <laughs> is there any place we need to be, is there anything we need to prep for, um, stuff like that. So I just kind of re review the past week and then think about what's coming up into the next week. Um, and again, this is just a template that I use, so I don't have to think about what kinds of things I want to do each week. And then. When, when I do those to-dos that are at the top of the list, I move them to the ta-da list at the end. So, ta-da, they're done. <laughs> they're not to-do anymore. So, and then again, that's kind of like, it's, I didn't make that up. That's from Gretchen Rubin, too. Um, but it, it feels good to know, like, I needed to talk to my friend if she's coming from Spain this summer. If she is, I need to plan some things. I need to save some vacation days. Do I need to plan Not till next year, 2021. <laughs> <laughs> but like, the information is there, and then I know that I did it, and I can look back on it if I need to. So I just kind of move things down from the top once they're done. I'm so excited. And I know, very exciting. So um, 
so yeah, I mean, the review piece is really key though. If you're gonna try to get things out of your head, again, you're not going to keep doing it if your brain doesn't trust that you're actually gonna look through the things that you're writing down. All right, so this is one quick bonus tip. We're not gonna spend too much time on this, but I thought this might be helpful for you all. When I really got back into like making my big goal for designing patterns last year, I knew that part of why I didn't like the design process or what held me back was that, you know, I'm publishing maybe one thing a month, maybe less than that, depending on what's going on. So then by the time the next month comes around and I've finished writing the pattern, I had to remember all the steps of the things that I had to do in order to get it published to promote it, well, and actually even before that, you have people like test knit your things to make sure that the instructions I wrote will actually work for people that have a brain outside of my own head. So, <laughs> but all of those things you'd say, you know what, I don't even know, there's probably 75 things I had to do and it felt so overwhelming that I just didn't do it. So last year I sat down and I wrote down the workflows. So if there's something that you do, a whole series of tasks, it's great to just write them all down, especially if the next time you need to do it is not tomorrow. If you're doing the same four steps every day, you probably don't need to write it down. Like but, going to the meetup of the HDMI table? Yeah. I do the same. I also have checklists, but this is more of like the workflow. Like you might need to do one step and then the other and then the other. But it kind of lowers that barrier for entry and doesn't make you feel so hard the next time you have to do it because who knows what I actually need to remember to do. So the ones that, um, and again, these may not make a lot of sense to you, but before I publish the design, I have to put all the details on my website. I need to draft everything in Ravelry, which is the website where I sell everything to give people all the information they need to know about needles and yarn and all that stuff that they need to use in order to decide if they're going to buy it. Um, I might need to finalize YouTube videos or tutorials and things like that. And then on the actual day, I have to publish the pattern. I usually do an intro offer, so I have to create promo codes and then remind myself to take down the info about the promo code once it's expired and things like that. The list isn't that hard, but if you're sitting there racking your brain of what do I need to do now? That is harder than actually just running down the list. So I thought I would just share a couple examples. Um, when I'm gonna pr promote a new um, product, I can be collecting photos from those people that test knitted. If people made seven different shawls and they're beautiful, I'll ask them, can I use those shawls when I post on Instagram? Usually people are like, it's really cool. Yeah, you can definitely share it. But I have to reach out to them and do those things. And then again, I can schedule posts on Instagram, but I like to write down ideas for myself of different kinds of things that I might like to do either before or um, after. I can draft my email newsletters, things like that. So we don't need to go into the details because I don't know how relevant it is for you, but these are just some examples of the things that I document. So we went through a lot tonight. <laughs> um, so what I would say is, Make goals, but more than that, make the concrete plans for what you need to do and how you're gonna work on them. Um, get, get the ideas out of your head, decide that next action, um, and then get working on that. Find a way of documenting that works for you. I know I'm kind of a broken record on that, but again, if you're a paper person, go with it. Don't fight the feeling. Um, create those new habits so that you don't have to rely on willpower because it's not gonna last as long as you think it will. Review those things regularly and adjust as necessary. Don't beat yourself up. You can always extend a deadline or cut the goal in half and just keep going. Um, document those workflows for things that you do often. And again, just kind of get those things out of your brain. Writing it down frees your brain up to think about what you want to do and where you want to go and who you want to be, not just what do I need to remember to do right now. So that is all I have for you tonight. Thank you guys so much. Yay! For you. Um, I'll make sure that mom has all my contact info so you guys can reach out to me. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free. And then I'll also make sure that she has um, the link to the different books that I talked about. Um, I would highly recommend any of them, all of them. So one of my things under moving closer to my goal there's, I reached out to my mom because she lives in Leisure Woods and she, they're always looking for events. So she went up, she thought this was great. She ran up to the hall. She didn't know, she doesn't know. She tells people, I, I don't know. She calls, 
what is it? Duncan Hines. Duncan Donuts is Duncan Hines. Like she mixes everything up. So she, God only knows what she told the lady I was doing. We'll find out. But the lady wants me to call her, which I am very bad at. No, <laughs> I'm shocked by this. I am shocked by this. I'm much better at making phone calls. Oh, so it's on my list. <laughs> it's on my list.